Hi guys, it's Joanne. I am an artist who uses a robotic arm and algorithms to create fine art paintings. And this week I wanted to show you how I create, or talk about how I created this painting here. Of all the paintings I've posted vlogs of so far, this painting has probably taken the most amount of work. And reason being, or one of the reasons is this painting I did in the interim and I really wasn't happy how this one turned out. So today I'll talk about this one as well as this one and some of the changes on the code. And then I will show you a sped up video of this week's painting. So when I painted this one, I was excited because the previous week I did this guy and it worked out really well. Probably the biggest um, issue with this one was the amount of paint coverage by the robot, but that's okay because in these pieces I am collaborating with the robot and I am filling in the paint while it is laying out the shapes. So this one worked out really well. There were very few shapes, so it painted really quickly. And so I went ahead and rushed ahead and did this one. But one thing you'll notice of the previous painting is this shape wasn't in that painting. And it ended up placing this shape in the wrong spots when I was painting. So there's several of them. So I see the digital version of the composition before I paint with the robot and what it was painting was not what was on that digital screen and I was surprised how much it changed the composition just by moving a couple of these blocks around. And the reason that was happening is I use pandas in my Python to move around the images and the image is placed based on the top left corner and I was placing everything based on the center because as an artist I'm more thinking where's the Where's this circle going to go? Where's the center? Where's And so I calculated the, the center of the rectangles of this shape and the half circles. And it was more an intuitive, if I were drawing, where would I want the, the point to be? But then because I use three different pieces of software I wrote, there was a bug between one of them. So I went back and rewrote how I place shapes with the robot. In the past videos, you'll also hear me talking about how for rectangles I was using, I hard-coded the process where it was painting vertical lines and horizontal lines based on where the rectangle is located, but for the other shapes it was placing it based on a CSV file. And so having multiple ways of placing a shape and painting a shape was getting a little bit complicated and it was difficult for me to even go back and debug my own code. So I now have all of the shapes placed based on subroutines within the robot software and it grabs all the details of the shape goes into the the subroutine and then it lays out the shape and so now I can access them all really quickly so to when I was programming that I actually in my code created a, a digital version of showing me where it's placing a shape and how the brush strokes will look on it and so I, that allowed me to to write code and debug away from the robot. And when I came back to test the code on the robot, if you follow me on Twitter, you would have seen when this happened in real time, but I broke my paintbrush. So I basically had a foam block I just cut with an X-Acto knife. I drilled a hole in the middle. The reason it's it's the hole's bigger is actually when it bent, it made the hole bigger. And yet it bent both the, the wooden part of the paintbrush as well as the metal ferrule. And so it was quite quite a bang when this came down. And so that was one of the problems with this design. I specifically wanted the brush to be in the center of this mount and then the gripper over top, because then when I learned how to manipulate this robot better, I would be able to manipulate this with a center point. And so I didn't want to offset it. But the problem with not offsetting it is I have to cut the brush each time. And if it comes down, rather than the brush pushing through, it's now going to break like this. And unfortunately, I only had one of these brushes and everything I've painted so far is calibrated to this brush or everything I've painted so far in this series. So I found the most similar brush I could find. It's actually a little bit smaller. And I ended up recently getting acquiring these blocks for Walter and the, they're just foam, solid foam blocks, but they already have the holes in there. They're for little hands to be able to grip. But it turns out it works perfectly. If you wrap a whole bunch of green painter's tape around a paintbrush, you can now have a positive lock of it in there. And now the, the robot holds this end 
And now if it ever slammed into the table, it's actually just going to push the brush through rather than breaking the brush. So I've always wanted to do this, but if I keep going with this, it'll actually make it harder to program the robot because now my tool tip is offset from the center point. So um, for instance, one of the motors is right here and I can rotate about there, but now it's a little more complicated if it's offset. But I'm just going to use this for now because it was so easy to just get going. And the other thing I wanted to say about that is now the the gripper or this block sits a bit lower in the gripper and because of that I don't have a positive lock because now the this could adjust up and down. So what the way I work around that is at the beginning when I run the code, I have the paintbrush go to all four corners and now when it's at the first corner I can adjust this a little bit with height to make sure it's at the right spot. And that actually makes a lot of sense because in the pre previous film you've seen that this robot is attached to the steel table back there, but I'm painting on this white IKEA table and they're not positively fixed to each other. So the table can move about and now the paintbrush can move about. So now I have a way of trying to align everything to work together. What else did I want to chat, chat about? We've talked about shape location. We've talked about brush. I also fixed the, the classifier on two levels. One thing was that when it was creating compositions, it was taking a lot of time and crashing after every after making several comp compositions. So I finally looked up the error and it turned out that I was loading in the TensorFlow model within my loop. And as soon as I moved the call to load the TensorFlow model outside the loop, I was literally able to cr go from creating a composition every five seconds to, I think I created about 10,000 compositions in a couple hours. That was a big deal to finally look up what that error could have been rather than letting my computer chug along. But as you can see, I was working on other stuff at the same time. And then I also retrained the, the classifier from scratch. Over time, I've been building up what I like and don't like and images I like and don't like in the classifiers. However, what I found is when the shapes keep changing or my color palettes keep changing, Sometimes the classifier doesn't work anymore on something new that has different shapes and different colors. And I know that because at this time in my code, I'm saving every single composition. So I can see that in the some of the images that are ranked low, I actually like. And so then what I do is I put those images into my good folder and any of the top ranked images that I don't like, I put in the bad folder. And over time, it starts actually classifying the images as good or bad more properly. So I think that's all I needed to say about this image. So I'm now going to do the sped up version of this painting and talk a little bit more about how it was created. So I have clips of both paintings to show you today. So here's the first yellow and blue painting that I worked on. And you can see Walter is very interested in the robot going back and forth. So I let him watch for a little while. Now we've sped up ahead and the robot is doing some final shapes while I'm trying to do many layers of yellow because yellow is just one of those colors where I need to add lots of layers in order to get that saturated color that I'm looking for. Right now that gray color is actually the background and so I'm filling it in now and I'm glad I did it that way because going back to the yellow it would have taken a lot of layers of yellow to get the yellow to pop with that background color. Now that last shape that it painted was actually supposed to be almost in the middle lower of the painting, but as I mentioned in the intro, it's um, in the wrong position. So I just went with it, finished this painting, and now I need to do a lot of work on the code. So now we're on to the next painting. You can see me adjusting the paintbrush there. It's now in its new green block holder, and I have to adjust the brush and the painting before I start. So I just did this first shape. If you're wondering, that's Larry on my shoulder. And now we go through the process that you've seen in previous videos of each time the robot lays out the shape, I fill in the shapes afterwards.
One thing that's nice about this painting process is I can step away for a moment and get water or answer the phone and still keep the painting process going. So now it's a similar grayish color in the background that I just filled in. And one thing you'll notice with that circle that didn't happen in the last paintings was the robot actually went and dipped and got more paint. Whereas in the, I think it was week four painting, it just kept painting and didn't get more paint. So there was very little paint on the shape. And for some reason there, it jumped ahead. My surface crashed while the webcam recording what we're watching. And so I'm just gonna go ahead. You can see that painting the circle, the robot's dipping into more and more paint, which is great because then I have to put fewer layers of paint on afterwards by hand. There's just a few more spots in this painting that are white. I really like how that blue pops in all of these warm colors. Unfortunately, one of the things my robot and my software process doesn't do, and it'll happen again here, it happens twice, is it paints a shape in paint that is already wet. And so I really need to have a catch that makes sure that the next shape isn't in wet paint, or at least it tells me uh, and I can bring my hair dryer out before it paints the next layer. But it's about to paint a yellow half circle in the, the purple that it's painting right now. And of course, then I have to put even more layers of paint. There's the half circle coming in. And now I'm using painter's tape to get some of those lines on the rectangles perfectly straight. I find it distracting when some of the final shapes don't have the straighter edges. And I don't paint right to the painter's tape just so I don't have that bleeding edge. I maybe leave about a half a millimeter gap. And now I'm doing some final touches to make sure all the colors are as saturated as they can be. Now I'm pulling off the painter's tape and pulling the painting out of its mounting. And there are the two paintings that I've discussed this week. And if you have any comments or questions, please put them on the YouTube video in the comments below. I'd love to be able to answer the questions in future vlogs. And thanks for watching.